<laughs> hey guys. Uh, no. Kelsey called uh, Cam yeah. Jurgens his favorite player in the draft and said that he's been sort of watching centers over the past couple of years for you. Can you sort of explain that relationship and, and what that's been like? Yeah, you know, when Kelsey came back, um, I, I, you know, I, obviously we don't know. This is a year-to-year -year thing with Jason and just very, very fortunate uh, every year that we get uh, Jason Kelsey as a player. And um, whenever he decides to not play anymore, which hopefully is a long time down the line, he, he can help us in any way he wants. And um, he said, hey, I love the draft process. And um, we gave him a few offensive linemen. And, um, you know, because Kelsey's here working out all the time and they're here during top 30 visits and we do performance stuff with them. And, um you know, Cam comes in my office and he goes, I just got him to meet Jason Kelsey. He's awesome. And I said, yeah, he's awesome. Um, and, um, you know, Kelsey, Kelsey saw all the same things that we saw. And, um, you know, we think Cam's got a chance to be a very special player in this offense. And um, I said to Kels, um, you know, Jace, um, we have this, like, unbelievable opportunity for a guy who's really talented to learn from the best who's ever done it here. And I said, you know, I, I don't know if it's a perfect analogy, but it's almost like, you know, Aaron Rodgers had the opportunity to learn behind Brett Favre. And then the, the Packers basically had like this, I don't know, 25 years of elite play at the quarterback position. And, you know, for the Philadelphia Eagles, for us, you know, um, having an elite play at the center position, it's important. And um, we felt like this guy um, – he was different than, than the centers have come out the last couple of years. We think he has a chance to be really, really good. And um, getting to learn from the best ever, we thought, was um, a way for him to be even better. And so um, when we were on the clock in the second round, um, I mean, these guys will tell you we had two players. And it was Cam and it was N'Kobe Dean. And, um, you know, um, unfortunately um, for our fans at the time, you know, I'm always going to go O-line, D-line. Um, that, that's that's how we roll. You know, that's how we build this thing. And um, and so, you know, we went through it and I, I looked around and everyone loved Cam Jurgen. So it was like, you know, I remember I, I looked at coach and I said to Andy and I said, we good? And they know, you know, uh, we're consistent, you know, if nothing else. And, um, and then we just paced, you know, for a long time. And, um, we, we know that, um, People had had some concerns, but um, the Kobe Dean's going to be on the field this week when we have rookie minicamp, and um, you know we we had a thorough exam of the Kobe, um, and you know this guy played in the SEC, and sure, you know you get bumps and bruises in the SEC, and um, but all the things that he has are are things that um, he's going to play football with for the Philadelphia Eagles. So um, there's no surgery scheduled, um, you know. We feel very fortunate that uh, he was there in the third round and uh, very excited to get him. What were some of the trades you liked about, um, I'm sorry, what, what were some of the trades you liked about, uh, about Cam Jurgens? Uh, I think with Cam Jurgens, his athletic ability, the explosiveness, the range, and the mentality that he played with. Um, and then we got to know him and got to know the person and the leadership and uh, the presence he had and uh, with the fit. It was a comfort level with all that. But um, you see it. You see it on tape and get out and lead and run and work on the second level and you know, displace people off the line of scrimmage and run blocking and just the mentality and the finish and uh, all those things that we like that our offensive linemen do, we saw in Cam. How about as far as making calls at the line? Did he do a lot of that in Nebraska, you know, setting, calling out the defense? He did. I mean, he's a, he's a very intelligent guy and a former tight end, very good athlete, three-year starter at center, and uh, excellent athlete in high school as well. And a uh, real intelligent guy. You know, he, he can make the calls. He's capable of doing that. And we had a real comfort level with his football intelligence. Oh, I want to get back all to ball. He's, all, he's all ball. And he, he showed us that when he was here on a visit. I mean, he's, he's all ball. That's, that's what he eats it, sleeps it, dreams it, everything. And so we're super confident in that. How are you going to call me at 3 in the morning? Because I see this is going to be one of those nights. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to get back to uh, N'Kobe Dean. Um, you mentioned he, with the, whatever injuries or ailments he has, he can play with them. Are those things you're concerned about getting mm -hmm. worse that could then result in a surgery or him missing significant time? Did you say illness? Ailments. Oh. <laughs> um, no. No, there, there's no concern about well, that from us. he has a pec strain, right? Um, he's, he has a, a pec injury that does not require surgery from our doctor. So. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Yeah, he's going to be on the field um, 
this weekend, and um, we don't anticipate missed time. Now, um, you know, he'll come in here and he'll take a physical, and we'll double check all those things. But, um, you know, listen, um, I think I called our doctors three, four times to see, am I missing something? We brought him in. Am I missing something? Am I missing something? Because obviously, I mean, this guy's way higher on our board, um, and we're considering him taking him at, I mean, we talked to him before today because he was a consideration, and um, that's what we got. And, you know, I know um, we, we, we exchange. We're not, we get a lot of information on these guys. This isn't just the Philadelphia Eagles information. We get a lot of information. That's how this rolls. You know, teams don't do this, like, in a vacuum. They do it with other teams because um, it's important for these guys to get them right. And, um, you know, um, we're excited about it. And, I, and I, th I, think, I, think, I think just talking to teams after, after we pick, he was coming. He was coming. I mean, it was, it was coming off. Like, if we didn't take him, he was gone. You didn't think that other teams pushed him back because of the medical? No, I think they clearly did. I mean, this is a, a unique player. I think the teams did. And, um, you know, for us, oh, we obviously we didn't, we didn't have that many picks. You know, we had three, I guess three for three rounds. I guess that's consistent with kind of how the draft goes. But, um, like I said, in the second round, uh, those are the two guys that we were deciding between. And, um yeah, you know, we picked because of, of how we build this team inside out, and um, we got lucky. How do you think it was the, the peck injury that was uh, holding other teams off or That's something else? Like. That's what it yeah. sounds like. I mean, I can only talk to what we have, and again, um, yeah, he'll be on the field. Can't wait. And, and, and I will tell you, um, you know, talking to Nicobe tonight, You're gonna have to hold his ass back. Yeah. <laughs> Howie, have you ever um, drafted a player, or any? And have you ever seen it where you've brought a player, a non-quarterback, in where you have someone who's an established veteran that you want him to learn from specifically? <clears throat> have you ever seen that before? This this Kelsey thing, Kelsey Jurgens thing, seems pretty unique. Well, I think that happens a lot at the quarterback position, right? Yeah, quarterback position. Uh, uh, but positions. but when you talk about like um, being a center, that is like. The, the quarterback position and um, we feel like if you have an opportunity for the importance that that plays for us that you have an opportunity to learn from the best who's ever done it who's welping, welcoming that and uh, of course this guy's got unique traits like he was in our mind very very worthy of the pick where we took him and um, you know those guys are hard to find they're not in every draft like this guy you know shout out to our offensive line coach Jeff Stoutland you know this guy is what He's unusual, you know, he, he is unusual. And um, uh, I know when we brought Stout in and we were talking about it before we made the pick and we said Stout and, you know, you guys will talk to him. This guy's unusual and um, that's why we liked him. Unusual. How unusual is it to involve a player in, in the evaluation process? Well, I, I mean, Kelsey's – obviously we have high respect for him, but we, we had him there. We're not giving Kelsey a guy that we had, you know, in the seventh round and he's bringing up to the second round. I mean, it was consistent with our evaluations. And um, I think it's because he's passionate, you know, in what he does. And um, we, we have a tremendous amount of respect for him. And, you know, you guys see it with some of our players who are around, you know, whether it's Connor who's done a tremendous job for us or – you know, Selleck, it helps, and Darren Sproles help with our player development. And so, um, you know, we, we, I think we got a line out the door now of our, of our players on our team who think they're, they're working after here. But we love it because these guys have tremendous passion. They know what it is to be a Philadelphia Eagle. They know what it takes to play in this city. And, um, and so, like, for us, it, it's, it's no different than having all the evaluations of the coaches and the scouts. It's, it's guys who know what they're doing and know what they're looking at. And I don't think that's all that different, too, than what happens in a, in a game plan, right? You bring guys in you trust, right? Because this, this draft process is so much like when you game plan, right? You know, it's, it's a, over a, a course of a year or over a course of a week 17 times as a coaching staff, but it's the same thing. Like, when we go through it, like, we're not – we're listening to Jason Kelsey's evaluation of what the blitz is going to look like. Hey, what do you want to do here on this look? And what do you want to do here on this look? Are you thinking just like, hey, we want inside zone off of this look right here out of this formation? What do you think, Jason, right? So it's I, – I look at it very similar to that. Like, you trust – you trust your players that are really smart. You listen to those players, and and, and it's just part of the evaluation process. Is, and it happens in and it happens in game planning as well. Nick, what kind of what what about Nakobe? Has you fired up? Oh man, uh, the, 
again, I, I think I've said this 50 times in the sense of what are we looking for in players, right? We're looking for high character guys. We're looking for guys that love football. We're looking for guys that are tough. We're looking for guys that are have high football IQ. Like, and he checks every single one of those boxes, right? Um, and competitive, right? That's my that's the last one. And he checks every one of those boxes. Like, and he's a leader on that field uh, for Georgia, right? He his football IQ is just is so high. His instincts are so high. And, you know, and that's just been my experience with players, too, that guys with high in, that are highly instinctive, they just find a way to make plays over and over and over and over again. And that's – and that's – it's just so hard not to get, I mean, excited about it. Like, you right there – I think you need to get a little more excited back there, all right, about this. Yeah, no, you. Yeah, you just look back. Like, it's exciting. I mean, this guy just – he loves ball. I mean, I, you can't Cam's get around guys way. like that. Cam's and Cam's the same way. And we got two guys that fit it. That fit exactly what we want as Eagles. I mean, and you just, you see the excitement in our coaches. Shane was texting me, "Hey, Camp's still on the board," and and Gannon's texting me, "Hey, Nicobe's still on the board." And I'm like, "I love how we work. All right, I got it, I got it." But it's we're so excited. I, I can't I can't even begin to tell you how excited we are. Hopefully, you, you feel it in my and, and, in my Andy presentation. Andy talked about you know both of us went down there as well as you know um, obviously Alan Walk and Phil Bias spent basically they could spend their whole fall down there you know it's like one-stop shopping down there uh, you go to practice you go to a game um you go visit that facility and you're just going shoot i'll draft this whole team you know and i think um that's a great credit to their program what they've done but um you know what and, and you start talking about the guys because you know you knew guys were going to go higher in this draft than them and everyone down there is like this this player's this this player's that and to a man they're all like don't forget nicobe dean you know don't forget nicobe dean and what he means to his football team and um i think when when we were discussing it whether it was a second round a third round or in our draft meetings you know i think all of us were reminding each other like let's let's not forget this guy you know he's, he's a really good player and there may be guys um, with better better measurables but this guy played at the highest level and he he was the heartbeat of that team and and you know having jordan and him together i think is great for both of them too it's it's like it's like kelsey and cam let me say one other thing too, because all I said was all the all the off the field intangible. These guys are stud football players too. Like let's let's not forget that as well. So I, I didn't even mention that. Shoot, and that's the most important thing. To that point, Howie, uh, two years of this partnership together. Last year, you take two players from the offense of the national champion. This year, you take two players from the defense. Is that intentional? <laughs> oh, we were supposed to wear those rings with Jordan Davis. Today. I know, I know. I didn't want to leave you <laughs> um, uh, you know, I, I think um, I, I think experience is a great teacher, you know, and sometimes it's like um, it's not that hard, you know, it's like um, great players, great school, you know, um, high, high recruits play at the highest level. It, it kind of works, you know, and um, I think that, you know, you want winners, you want guys uh, who've done it. You know, I, we were joking, Coach is joking, because, you know, I don't know if you guys saw when Jordan's walking around, he's got this – I mean, his ring looks bigger than anyone's I've ever seen, right? It's just the big – it's just he's wearing it around like that. And um, and these guys these guys know what it takes. And I think that the NFL season's uh, – it's a roller coaster ride, you know. It's the ups and downs. And when you have guys that when you're down are going to help bring you back up, and those guys who are champions who know what happens when adversity hits and how to raise the level of everyone, I mean, that's that's what team's all about. So um, I when you're two and five, how do when you're two and five? Back. And um, for us, that, that was a huge learning experience for us this year. You know who's with us, and uh, we know these guys are going to be with us. And so, um, yeah, it's intentional. It's intentional to get winners. It's intentional. The draft picks are lots of draft picks are down. down. I, I, you've been trying to assess. Is there consideration the trading back? And are you comfortable mm -hmm. with, with where you are from an inventory perspective tomorrow? No. I mean, uh, I'd love to have 10 picks tomorrow, you know? Like, that, that's not fun. Um, you know, I think that um, in the second round, it was a little bit less action. And it, it's kind of funny because I, I, I realized this after the second round. Um, a couple of years, there come, kind of come, has been, had been a lull in the second round with trade activity. And then it kind of picks up again. Um, and then in the third round, it kind of heated up a little bit, and we had to make a decision. You know, we had to make a decision there like, yeah, man, we'd love to have some more volume, but um, 
would we regret passing on this guy and how long we waited and, you know, just looking out around the room and, and how everyone felt about this guy. It was like, yeah, we can get a couple more picks, but um, again, as you get later in the draft, you know, you don't know about the quality and um, we had belief in, in these guys we picked. So I think it, it, we had more opportunities maybe in the third round to move back, but at that point we felt like it was really good value to take the player. Um, in the second round, it, was, it wasn't that much. There, there was a little bit of a run in the second round of position, and I think people were kind of getting on that run, and then it kind of like, you know, kind of stalled a little bit. But I'm very happy to take Cam, and that, that wasn't like a reach on our board. That wasn't like anything that we were kind of like, oh, who are we going to take now? Like, he, he stuck out. Two of those two guys stuck out. So, But, yes, we'd love more picks. But um, I, told, I told Coach, I told uh, – I went and saw scouts, and – in the draft room, I said, um, we have like the best undrafted free agency in the history of undrafted free agency. And lucky for us, there's like 700 more players in this draft. So um, we got coaching and staff are like, who, who, who? I was like, well, not yet, not yet. <laughs> Hold the energy. So, we'll, um, you know, we think we're, we're going to get guys after the draft that we're going to have on our front board. And those are going to be like extra picks. And, you know, we're hopeful that some of the guys we would have considered in a sixth and seventh round, we get there. And from our perspective, um, you know, what we're, we're, we're like, we're, we're missing a fourth round pick and a sixth round pick, right? Um, but we also got an extra player in this draft because of those picks. So. Would, you been, would you have been surprised uh, you if you, you were told, though, about You mentioned before. Stout with Cam a little bit. Just can he kind of take us into the process of where, and, and maybe Nick as well, where the coaches come in, obviously late, but how much import he had <laughs> on, on getting Cam here? Wow. <laughs> you got you to ask this that again. No, I, of, I got it. I got it. I got it. Body language going on <laughs> here. Body language going on there. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the coaches um, the coaches come in after the season. You know, hopefully that's as late as possible. And um, really around for, for us after the playoffs is around the senior bowl time. And um, Andy and his staff give, give a, a list of guys that – we like, you know, we don't give them guys that, that we're not high on. So uh, we kind of start a different process and, and then they grind them and, um, and coach and his staff, they love, they love this process and love being part of it. And so they got guys and we include them and we listen to their opinions and we put it as part of the process. And, you know, we make sure we're all kind of talking it through. And um, obviously we have a t tremendous amount of respect for coach Stalin and, and his part of this process, just like a lot of our coaches here, all our coaches here. And um, he's got a track record and, um, luckily, we, we really kind of see things through his eyes, and um, he's been here for a long time, and so we kind of know what he's looking for, and we try to give him players like that, and um, you can kind of kind of predict, um, you know, who he's going to really like. You know, you can know that. And, you know, what was it, about a week into the draft process, and Coach and I were in my office, and maybe Andy even came was in there, and, and uh, South's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, I got one. I got one. And uh, who, who do you got, Stout? And he gave us, like, you know, like, second round pick. And we're like, no, no, he's going to go pretty high. He's like, I don't know where these guys go. You just give me the guys. I grade them. So, uh, yeah, he's, it's, it's fun having a part of it. I mean, Jeff, what do you got, man? What do you got? Do you, do you what do you got? You, do don't throw your pencil at me. Do you I'll throw one of these at you right you back at you. Able, do you think you'll be able to address the secondary um, from here on out? You know, um, I think every team is going to have a hole at some spot after this draft. And um, we got between now and September, and, you know, hopefully we're able to add guys. But um, if we would have taken a guy in the secondary um, over a better player like Nicobe or Cam on our board, then it would have been a reach. And then you guys would have said we were reaching. So it's like we got to just do what the board tells us we can do. And unfortunately for us, like we're picking where we're picking, and uh, we made some trades up. And – um, we understand that we'll have work to do after this draft. We weren't thinking we were coming out here and um, everything would be perfect and every position would be perfect, but uh, we'll work our ass off to make sure the team's as good as it possibly can be. All right. Thanks. Thank you.